in many different monasteries, such as the monasteries where um, the different turtles would uh, uh, be the abbot or, or, or being over there. Um, there are different liturgies, for example, Yamataka, Vajrakilaya, and all kinds of extensive liturgies. And today, this particular text was revealed by Garma Limpa, Garma Limpa, Karma Limpa. Sometimes in the Andoke or in the Ando uh, accent, we would call Lampa instead of Limpa, but I'm not sure if we should unify it as Lampa or Limpa. Anyhow, Karma Limpa, Karma means activity, and Limpa is a symbol or a, a name for the turtles. There are five great turtles of the five directions the Dorji Lampa of um, uh, the east, Rinchin Limpa of uh, south, and uh, uh, Bama Limpa of the, of the west, Garma Limpa of the north, and in the center it was Sanji Limpa. Um, in terms of the translators, there are three great translators, uh, Garwa Bazi and uh, uh, Junri Li Jiangsen, as well as uh, Rang Yi Sida. Out of the three great translators, the Junri Li Jiangsen was the previous translation of Karma Limpa. Karma Limpa's father was also a great turtle. His name is Linda Sanji. He lived for 125 years. Gamalimpa started to review Terma at the age of 15. He traveled to various places to review different termas. Within the Buddhist, uh, his, the Nyingma history of Buddhism composed by Dujo Rinpoche stated that when he was choosing his consort, he chose the wrong consort, and because of that, uh, his consort um, conspired to poison him and succeeded in that uh, with, with uh, someone else. So his death was rather quite unfortunate, but other than that, he truly revealed great terma and was a great master. At, at the time or before he passed away, before Karma Limpa passed away, he passed his all of his termas to his only disciple, whose name was uh, Ninda Choji. And Ninda Choji, Pass down the termas only to one disciple at a time for three generations, and that was also the prediction given by Kamalimpa before he passed away. Now, the different termas of Kamalimpa, including, for example, the hundred uh, deities of um, uh, the, wrath, uh, the hundred of wrathful and peaceful deities, the six bardos, and uh, the Tibetan book of, of Dai, a Tibetan book of death. He was around the Gompo area of Tibet, and his dharma is still very much propagated and uh, is flourishing in Amdo and uh, in Kham area. The most popular text of Karma Limpa is mainly the Bardo teachings and the Tibetan Book of, uh, of Death is, has been translated into English in 1911. I had seen the text that's translated back then uh, when I was at uh, the museums in the West. Indeed, the Karma Limpa's terma is rather quite open, especially when it comes to the Bardo teachings, for example, the liberation upon hearing um, and uh, many of those. 
teachings. Today, this particular text is rather a very short terma that talks about the merits and, and benefits of the Vajraguru mantra. So let's look at the text. Over here it says that I prostrate to the Guru, the Edom, and the Dakini. Yeshitsokyo over here says that I, the lowly woman Yeshitsokyo, made a great outer, inner, and a secret mandala offering and humbly ask. Yeshitsokyo. Started to request the Dharma. Yeshis Hokyo is just like Ananda beside uh, Shakyamuni Buddha. When she was alive, she requested uh, great numbers of Dharma teachings from Pamasambhava. At times of leaving Tibet, Pama Sambhava wrote many great termas on uh, golden volumes or yellow paper and then sealed them with Dakini letters or da Dakini language. <laughs> Nowadays, we see different kinds of terma that's reviewed from sacred mountains, lakes, and even space. It's because of that. Yeshitsokyo uh, is because Yeshitsokyo requested those teachings. Though Yeshitsokyo may appear to be like a common woman, but through her biography, we see that her inequality is indeed quite great. It is quite unfathomable. For the later generations, whenever we read the biography of hers, we would generate great faith. I know that lots of Western Westerners, especially uh, Western uh, female practitioners, are quite encouraged and even empowered by the biography of the Dakini Yeshitsogyo, especially when we put her stories and her biographies into the context of um, the time period, which was over 1,000 years ago. In Tibet, just like all over the world, there was the tendency of um, um, of take women lightly. So, considering that women, a woman such as Yeshitsogyo could be so wise and has such great capacities and has such great merits, is indeed very encouraging. Whenever we study and whenever uh, I encounter people who study uh, Dakini Yeshis Hogyo, they indeed praise the qualities that she has and the spirits that she has. And they and all of those researchers or scholars usually would tell me that the story of Yeshis Hogyo definitely brings a new way of contemplation and a new way of looking at women even from the now perspective. Indeed, Dakini Yeshis Hogyo made all kinds of requests and uh, all, asked all kinds of questions, and some of the questions are rather quite sharp. Such kinds of questions bring great benefits in requesting Dharma teachings. People around a Dharma teacher, if they can ask sharp questions, if they can request Dharma teachings like Yeshis Hokyo, that would bring great benefits because their requests, their requests would um, lead to the spreading of precious dharma. Yeshis Hokyo over here says that while well, I make a greater, a great outer, inner, and secret mandala, great outer mandala is the body and inner is speech and secret is mind. And sometimes the outer could be the 
um, the actual mandala that we make, and the inner mandala is the body mandala, and the sacred mandala is the mandala of great bliss wisdom. Um, and the body, speech, and mind is the, the three body mandala that we practice in the Ningtik preliminary practices. After making the three mandalas to after make, uh, offering of the three mandalas to Pamasambhava, he said that, um, "O oh Master Lotus Born, the work you have done for the welfare of all sentient beings here in Tibet is." This, in this and in future lives is vast. No one of such extreme kindness has ever come before, nor shall any come again. This is such an accurate description of the merit of Pamasambhava, because Pamasambhava came to Tibet and subjugated all the maras and spirits, turned them into protectors, and then spread the Dharma teaching over here in Tibet. For over 1,300 years, we do not see anyone else who has such, who made such great um, contribution to Dharma teachings. And then Yeshi Tokyo, with her wisdom, I made observation of it and stated it in such a correct way. Throughout history, though, we have uh, Master Tsongkhapa, uh, Long Chenpa, and the five great masters of Sakyapa and the great numbers of masters of uh, Jonampa, Milarepa, Marpalotawa, and so on and so forth. But none of them has such power as Pamasambhava. Just as Shantara Kushita, when he came to Tibet, he really couldn't even build Samye. In the day when he was building Samye, um, with human beings, at night all the ghosts and spirits would destroy all of the constructions that had been done during the day. So we can see that the different spirits and amaras and ghosts roaming about this uh, on this part of the land was rather quite powerful. So Shantara Kashita couldn't really do anything. He could only request Pamaksambhava use he, his miraculous powers to uh, plant a firm foundation for the Dharma to flourish over here. And we can all see that. For that reason, I think Nimapa, and not just Nimapa, Gelupa, or the Chinese Buddhism, Tibetan and Buddhism. Whatever kinds of um, schools that we have, as long as the teachings are beneficial to human beings, to our own liberation, then I think the different schools are really of no difference. Uh, no, no difference. Throughout history, we can see that Pamasambhava indeed bestowed us a great benefits, a great kindness, and the qualities that he had and all the contributions he made had never appeared in any other places or um, uh, appeared any time later uh, or other than him. Tibetan Buddhism as well as Buddhism of other places, though well, now that we have Tibetan Buddhism flourish, flourishing uh, over here, it's because of the great kindness of Pamasambhava and Shantara Kashita. People all over the world, the, the Buddhists all over the world, has opportunities to receive such great Vajrayana teachings is indeed rare. In different places, Buddhism has turned into um, only symbols, and maybe there are symbols of monasteries and of um, uh, Buddha statues, but the genuine Dharma teachings are hard to spread. So for that reason, 
I think Tibetan Buddhism flourished all over the world and can be kept um, and in, can be kept without any um, decline in the snowy land of Tibet has all kinds of causes and conditions which are related to Pama Sambhava. That is why Yeshi Tokyo stated that Though there are great masters, but um, no one of such extreme kindness has ever come before, nor shall any come again later. We see all kinds of great masters, uh, King Sun Sam Kampo, and uh, different kinds of masters that appeared in this land. But throughout history, the great masters, though, came to this world, but no one can compare to Pamasambhava. 